Part One of the House of Dust, a Symphony. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. The House of Dust, a Symphony by Conrad Aiken. Part One. Section One. The sun goes down in a cold, pale flare of light. The trees grow dark, the shadows lean to the east, and lights wink out through the windows one by one. A clamor of frosty sirens mourns at the night. Pale, slate-gray clouds whirl up from the sunken sun. And the wandering one, the inquisitive dreamer of dreams, the eternal asker of answers, stands in the street and lifts his palms for the first cold ghost of rain. The purple lights leap down the hill before him. The gorgeous night has begun again. I will ask them all. I will ask them all their dreams. I will hold my light above them and seek their faces. I will hear them whisper invisible in their veins. The eternal asker of answers becomes as the darkness, or as a wind blown over a myriad forest, or as the numberless voices of long-drawn rains we hear him and take him among us like a wind of music like the ghost of a music we have somewhere heard we crowd through the streets in a dazzle of pallid lamplight we pour in a sinister wave ascend a stair with laughter and cry and word upon murmured word we flow we descend we turn and the eternal dreamer moves among us like light like evening air good night good night good night we go our ways the rain runs over the pavement before our feet the cold rain falls the rain sings we walk we run we ride we turn our faces to what the eternal evening brings our hands are hot and raw with the stones we have laid we have built a tower of stone high into the sky we have built a city of towers our hands are light they are singing with emptiness our souls are light they have shaken a burden of hours what did we build it for was it all a dream ghostly above us in lamplight the towers gleam and after a while they will fall to dust and rain or else we will tear them down with impatient hands and hew rock out of the earth and build them again section two one from his high bright window in a tower leans out as evening falls and sees the advancing curtain of the shower splashing its silver on roofs and walls sees how swift as a shadow it crosses the city and murmurs beyond far walls to the sea leaving a glimmer of water in the dark canyons and silver falling from eve and tree one from his high bright window looking down peers like a dreamer over the rain-bright town and thinks its towers are like a dream the western windows flame in the sun's last flare pale roofs begin to gleam looking down from a window high in a wall he sees us all lifting our pallid faces towards the rain searching the sky and going our ways again standing in doorways waiting under the trees there in the high bright window he dreams and sees what we are blind to we who mass and crowd from wall to wall in the darkening of a cloud the gulls drift slowly above the city of towers over the roofs to the darkening sea they fly night falls swiftly on an evening of rain the yellow lamps wink one by one again the towers reach higher and blacker against the sky section three one where the pale sea foamed at the yellow sand with wave upon slowly shattering wave turned to the city of towers as evening fell and slowly walked by the darkening road toward it and saw how the towers darkened against the sky and across the distance heard the toll of a bell along the darkening road he hurried alone with his eyes cast down and thought how the streets were hoarse with a tide of people with clamour of voices and numberless faces and it seemed to him of a sudden that he would drown here in the quiet of evening air these empty and voiceless places and he hurried towards the city to enter there along the darkening road between tall trees that made a sinister whisper loudly he walked behind him seagulls dipped over long grey seas before him numberless lovers smiled and talked 
and death was observed with sudden cries and birth with laughter and pain and the trees grew taller and blacker against the skies and night came down again section four up high black walls up sombre terraces clinging like luminous birds to the sides of cliffs the yellow lights went climbing towards the sky from high black walls gleaming vaguely with rain each yellow light looked down like a golden eye they trembled from coin to coin and tower to tower along high terraces quicker than dream they flew and some of them steadily glowed and some soon vanished and some strange shadows threw and behind them all the ghosts of thoughts went moving restlessly moving in each lamp-lit room from chair to mirror from mirror to fire from some the light was scarcely more than a gloom from some a dazzling desire and there was one beneath black eaves who thought combing with lifted arms her golden hair of the lover who hurried towards her through the night and there was one who dreamed of a sudden death as she blew out her light and there was one who turned from clamoring streets and walked in lamp-lit gardens among black trees and looked at the windy sky and thought with terror how stones and roots would freeze and birds in the dead boughs cry and she hurried back as snow fell mixed with rain to mingle among the crowds again to jostle beneath blue lamps along the street and lost herself in the warm bright coiling dream with a sound of murmuring voices and shuffling feet and one from his high bright window looking down on luminous chasms that cleft the basalt town hearing a sea-like murmur rise desired to leave his dream descend from the tower and drown in waves of shouts and laughter and cries section five the snow floats down upon us mingled with rain it eddies around pale lilac lamps and falls down golden windowed walls we were all born of flesh in a flare of pain we do not remember the red roots whence we rose but we know that we rose and walked that after a while we shall lie down again the snow floats down upon us we turn we turn through gorges filled with light we sound and flow one is struck down and hurt we crowd about him we bear him away gaze after his listless body but whether he lives or dies we do not know one of us sings in the street and we listen to him the words ring over us like vague bells of sorrow he sings of a house he lived in long ago it is strange this house of dust was the house i lived in the house you lived in the house that all of us know in coiling slowly about him and laughing at him and throwing him pennies we bear away a mournful echo of other times and places and follow a dream a dream that will not stay down long broad flights of lamplit stairs we flow noisy and scattered waves crowding and shouting in broken slow cascades the gardens extend before us we spread out swiftly trees are above us in darkness the canyon fades and we recall with a gleaming stab of sadness vaguely and incoherently some dream of a world we came from a world of sun-blue hills a black wood whispers around us green eyes gleam someone cries in the forest and someone kills we flow to the east to the white-lined shivering sea we reach to the west where the whirling sun went down we close our eyes to music and bright cafes we diverge from clamorous streets to streets that are silent we loaf where the wind-spilled fountain plays and growing tired we turn aside at last remember our secret selves seek out our towers lay weary hands on the banisters and climb climbing each to his little four-square dream of love or lust or beauty or death or crime section six over the darkened city the city of towers the city of a thousand gates over the gleaming terraced roofs the huddled towers over a somnolent whisper of loves and hate the slow wind flows drearily streams and falls with a mournful sound down rain-dark walls on one side purples the lustrous dusk of the sea and dreams in white at the city's feet on one side sleep the plains with heaped-up hills oaks and beeches whisper in rings about it above the trees are towers where dread bells beat the fisherman draws his streaming net from the sea 
and sails toward the far-off city that seems like one vague tower the dark bow plunges to foam on blue-black waves and shrill rain seethes like a ghostly music about him in a quiet shower rain with a shrill sings on the lapsing waves rain thrills over the roofs again like a shadow of shifting silver it crosses the city the lamps in the streets are streamed with rain and sparrows complain beneath deep eaves and among whirled leaves the seagulls blowing from tower to lower tower from wall to remoter wall skim with the driven rain to the rising sea sound and close grey wings and fall hearing great rain above me i now remember a girl who stood by the door and shut her eyes her pale cheeks glistened with rain she stood and shivered into a forest of silver she vanished slowly voices about me rise voices clear and silvery voices of raindrops we struck with silver claws we struck her down we are the ghosts of the singing furies a chorus of elfin voices blowing about me weaves to a babble of sound each cries a secret i run among them reach out vain hands and drown i am the one who stood beside you and smiled thinking your face so strangely young i am the one who loved you but did not dare i am the one you followed through crowded streets the one who escaped you the one with red gleamed hair i am the one you saw to-day who fell senseless before you hearing a certain bell a bell that broke great memories in my brain i am the one who passed unnoticed before you invisible in a cloud of secret pain i am the one who suddenly cried beholding the face of a certain man on the dazzling screen they wrote me that he was dead it was long ago i walked in the streets for a long while hearing nothing and returned to see it again and it was so weave 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 you streaks of rain i am dissolved and woven again thousands of faces rise and vanish before me thousands of voices weave in the rain i am the one who rode beside you blinking at a dazzle of golden lights tempests of music swept me i was thinking of the gorgeous promise of certain nights of the woman who suddenly smiled at me this day smiled in a certain delicious sidelong way and turned as she reached the door to smile once more her hands are whiter than snow on midnight water her throat is golden and full of golden laughter her eyes are strange as the stealth of the moon on a night in june she runs among whistling leaves i hurry after she dances and dreams over white waved water her body is white and fragrant and cool magnolia petals that float on a white starred pool i have dreamed of her dreaming for many nights of a broken music and golden lights of broken webs of silver heavily falling between my hands and their white desire and dark-leaved boughs edged with a golden radiance dipping to screen a fire i dream that i walk with her beneath high trees but as i lean to kiss her face she is blown aloft on wind i catch at leaves and run in a moonless place and i hear a crashing of terrible rocks flung down and shattering trees and cracking walls and a net of intense white flame roars over the town and someone cries and darkness falls now she has leaned and smiled at me my veins are afire with music her eyes have kissed me my body is turned to light i shall dream to her secret heart to-night he rises and moves away he says no word he folds his evening paper and turns away i rush through the dark with rows of lamp-lit faces fire bells peal and some of us turn to listen and some sit motionless in their accustomed places cold rain lashes the car roof scurries in gusts streams down the windows in waves and ripples of lustre the lamps in the streets are distorted and strange someone takes his watch from his pocket and yawns one peers out in the night for the place to change rain 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 we are buried in rain it will rain forever the swift wheels hiss through water pale sheets of water gleam in the windy street the pealing of bells is lost in a drive of raindrops remote and hurried the great bells beat i am the one whom life so shrewdly betrayed misfortune dogs me it always hunted me down and to-day the woman i love lies dead 
I gave her roses, a ring with opals, These hands have touched her head. I bound her to me in all soft ways, I bound her to me in a net of days, Yet now she has gone in silence and said no word. How can we face these dazzling things, I ask you? There is no use, we cry, and are not heard. They cover a body with roses, I shall not see it. Must one return to the lifeless walls of a city whose soul is charred by fire? His eyes are closed, his lips press tightly together. Wheels hiss beneath us, he yields us our desire. No, do not stare so, he is weak with grief, he cannot face you, he turns his eyes aside, he is confused with pain. I suffered this, I know, it was long ago. He closes his eyes and drowns in death again. The wind hurls blows at the rain-starred glistening windows. The wind shrills down from the half-seen walls. We flow on the mournful wind in a dream of dying. And at last a silence falls. Section 7. Midnight. Bells toll, and along the cloud-high towers the golden lights go out. The yellow windows darken, the shades are drawn. In thousands of rooms we sleep, we await the dawn. We lie face down, we dream. We cry aloud with terror, half rise, or seem to stare at the ceiling or walls. Midnight. The last of shattering bell notes falls. A rush of silence whirls over the cloud-high towers, a vortex of soundless hours. The bells have just struck twelve, I should be sleeping. But I cannot delay any longer to write and tell you the woman is dead. She died, you know the way, just as we planned, smiling with open sunlit eyes, smiling upon the outstretched fatal hand. He folds his letter, steps softly down the stairs. The doors are closed and silent. A gas jet flares. His shadow disturbs a shadow of balustrades. The door swings shut behind, night roars above him, into the night he fades. Wind, 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 carving the walls, blowing the water that gleams in the street, blowing the rain, the sleet. In the dark alley an old tree cracks and falls, oak boughs moan in the haunted air, lamps blow down with a crash and tinkle of glass, darkness whistles, wild hours pass. And those whom sleep eludes lie wide-eyed, hearing above their heads a goblin night go by. Children are waked and cry. The young girl hears the roar in her sleep and dreams that her lover is caught in a burning tower. She clutches the pillow, she gasps for breath, she screams. And then by degrees her breath grows quiet and slow. She dreams of an evening long ago, of colored lanterns balancing under trees, some of them softly catching a fire and beneath the lanterns a motionless face she sees. Golden with lamplight, smiling, serene, the leaves are a pale and glittering green, the sound of horns blows over the trampled grass, shadows of dancers pass. The face smiles closer to her, she tries to lean backward, away, the eyes burn close and strange, the face is beginning to change, it is her lover she no longer desires to resist, she is held and kissed. She closes her eyes and melts in a seethe of flame, with a smoking ghost of shame. Wind, 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 wind in an enormous brain, blowing dark thoughts like fallen leaves. The wind shrieks, the wind grieves, it dashes the leaves on walls, it whirls then again. And the enormous sleeper vaguely and stupidly dreams, and desires to stir, to resist a ghost of pain. One whom the city imprisoned because of his cunning, who dreamed for years in a tower, seizes this hour of tumult and wind. He files through the rusted bar, leans his face to the rain, laughs up at the night, slides down the knotted sheet, swings over the wall, to fall to the street with a cat-like fall, slinks round a quavering rim of windy light, and at last is gone, leaving his empty cell for the pallor of dawn. The mother whose child was buried today turns her face to the window, her face is grey, and all her body is cold with the coldness of rain. He would have grown as easily as a tree. He would have spread a pleasure of shade above her. He would have been his father again. His growth was ended by a freezing, invisible shadow. She lies and does not move, 
and is stabbed by the rain wind 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 we toss and dream we dream we are clouds and stars blown in a stream windows rattle above our beds we reach vague gesturing hands we lift our heads hear sounds far off and dream with quivering breath our curious separate ways through life and death section eight the white fog creeps from the cold sea over the city over the pale grey tumbled towers and settles among the roofs the pale grey walls along damp sinuous streets it crawls curls like a dream among the motionless trees and seems to freeze the fog slips ghost-like into a thousand rooms whirls over sleeping faces spins in an atomy dance round misty street lamps and blows in cloudy waves over open spaces and one from his high window looking down peers at the cloud-white town and thinks its island towers are like a dream it seems an enormous sleeper within whose brain laborious shadows revolve and break and gleam End of part one. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part two of the House of Dust, a symphony by Conrad Aiken. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part two. Part two, section one. The round red sun heaves darkly out of the sea. The walls and towers are warmed and gleam. Sounds go drowsily up from streets and wharves. The city stirs like one that is half in dream. And the mist flows up by dazzling walls and windows, where one by one we wake and rise. We gaze at the pale gray lustrous sea a moment. We rub the darkness from our eyes and face our thousand devious secret mornings and do not see how the pale mist slowly ascending shaped by the sun shines like a white-robed dreamer compassionate over our towers bending there like one who gazes into a crystal he broods upon our city with sombre eyes he sees our secret fears vaguely unfolding sees cloudy symbols shaped to rise each gleaming point of light is like a seed dilating swiftly to coiling fires each cloud becomes a rapidly dimming face each hurrying face records its strange desires we descend our separate stairs toward the day merge in the somnolent mass that fills the street lift our eyes to the soft blue space of sky and walk by the well-known walls with accustomed feet section two the fulfilled dream more towers must yet be built more towers destroyed great rocks hoisted in air and he must seek his bread in high pale sunlight with gulls about him and clouds just over his eyes and so he did not mention his dream of falling but drank his coffee in silence and heard in his ears that horrible whistle of wind and felt his breath sucked out of him and saw the tower flash by and the small tree swell beneath him he patted his boy on the head and kissed his wife looked quickly around the room to remember it and so went out for once he forgot his pail something had changed but it was not the street the street was just the same it was himself puddles flashed in the sun in the pawn shop door the same old black cat winked green amber eyes the butcher stood by his window tying his apron the same men walked beside him smoking pipes reading the morning paper he would not yield he thought and walk more slowly as if he knew for certain he walked to death but with his usual pace deliberate firm looking about him calmly watching the world taking his ease yet when he thought again of the same dream now dreamed three separate times always the same and heard that whistling wind and saw the windows flashing upward past him he slowed his pace a little and thought with horror how monstrously that small tree thrust to meet him he slowed his pace a little and remembered his wife was forty then too old for work like this why should it be he'd never been afraid his eye was sure his hand was steady but dreams had meanings he walked more slowly and looked along the roofs all built by men and saw the pale blue sky and suddenly he was dizzy with looking at it it seemed to whirl and swim 
It seemed the color of terror, of speed, of death. He lowered his eyes to the stones. He walked more slowly. His thoughts were blown and scattered like leaves. He thought of the pail. Why, then, was it forgotten? Because he would not need it? Then, just as he was grouping his thoughts again about that drugstore corner under an arc lamp, where first he met the girl whom he would marry, that blue-eyed innocent girl in a soft blouse, he waved his hand for signal and up he went in the dusty chute that hugged the wall. Above the tree, from girdered floor to floor, above the flattening roofs until the sea lay wide and waved before him, and then he stepped giddily out from that security to the red rib of iron against the sky, and walked along it, feeling it sing and tremble, and looking down one instant saw the tree just as he dreamed it was, and looked away, and up again, feeling his blood go wild. He gave the signal. The long girder swung closer to him, dropped clanging into place, almost pushing him off. Pneumatic hammers began their madhouse clatter, the white-hot rivets were tossed from below and deftly caught in pails. He signaled again and wiped his mouth, and thought a place so high in the air should be more quiet. The tree far down below teased at his eyes, teased at the corners of them until he looked and felt his body go suddenly small and light, felt his brain float off like a dwindling vapor, and heard a whistle of wind and saw a tree come plunging up to him, and thought to himself, by God, I'm done for now. The dream was right. Section 3. Interlude. The warm sun dreams in the dust. The warm sun falls on bright red roofs and walls. The trees in the park exhale a ghost of rain. We go from door to door in the streets again, talking, laughing, dreaming, turning our faces, recalling other times and places. We crowd, not knowing why, around a gate. We crowd together and wait. A stretcher is carried out. Voices are stilled. The ambulance drives away. We watch its roof flash by. Hear someone say a man fell off the building and was killed. Fell right into a barrel. We turn again among the frightened eyes of white-faced men and go our separate ways, each bearing with him a thing he tries but vainly to forget. A sickened crowd, a stretcher red and wet. A hurdy-gurdy sings in the crowded street. The golden notes skip over the sunlit stones. Wings are upon our feet. The sun seems warmer, the winding street more bright. Sparrows come whirring down in a cloud of light. We bear our dreams among us, bear them all. Like hurdy-gurdy music they rise and fall, climb to beauty and die. The wandering lover dreams of his lover's mouth and smiles at the hostile sky. The broker smokes his pipe and sees a fortune. The murderer hears a cry. Section 4. Nightmare. Draw three cards and I will tell your future. Draw three cards and lay them down. Rest your palms upon them, stare at the crystal, and think of time. My father was a clown, my mother was a gypsy out of Egypt, and she was gotten with child in a strange way. And I was born in a cold eclipse of the moon, with a future in my eyes as clear as day. I sit before the gold-embroidered curtain and think her face is like a wrinkled desert. The crystal burns in lamplight beneath my eyes. A dragon slowly coils on the scaly curtain. Upon a scarlet cloth a white skull lies. Your hand is on the hand that holds three lilies. You will live long, love many times. I see a dark girl here who once betrayed you. I see a shadow of secret crimes. There was a man who came intent to kill you and hid behind a door and waited for you. There was a woman who smiled at you and lied. There was a golden girl who loved you, begged you, crawled after you, and died. There is a ghost of murder in your blood, coming or past, I know not which. And here is danger, a woman with sea-green eyes and white-skinned as a witch. The words hiss into me like raindrops falling on sleepy fire. She smiles a meaning smile. Suspicion eats my brain, I ask a question. Something is creeping at me, something vile. And suddenly on the wall behind her head I see a monstrous shadow strike and spread. The lamp puffs out, a great blow crashes down. I plunge through the curtain, run through dark to the street, and hear swift steps retreat. The shades are drawn, the door is locked behind me. Behind the door I hear a hammer sounding. 
I walk in a cloud of wonder, I am glad. I mingle among the crowds, my heart is pounding. You do not guess the adventure I have had. Yet you too, all have had your dark adventures, Your sudden adventures, or strange, or sweet. My peril goes out from me as blown among you. We loiter, dreaming together along the street. Section 5. Retrospect Round white clouds roll slowly above the housetops. Over the clear red roofs they flow and pass. A flock of pigeons rises with blue wings flashing. Rises with whistle of wings, hovers an instant, And settles slowly again on the tarnished grass. And one old man looks down from a dusty window And sees the pigeons circling about the fountain, And desires once more to walk among those trees. Lovers walk in the noontime by that fountain. Pigeons dip their beaks to drink from the water, And soon the pond must freeze. The light wind blows to his ears a sound of laughter. Young men shuffle their feet, loaf in the sunlight. A girl's laugh rings like a silver bell. But clearer than all these sounds is a sound he hears More in his secret heart than in his ears. A hammer's steady crescendo like a knell. He hears the snarl of pine boards under the plane, The rhythmic saw and then the hammer again, Playing with delicate strokes that sombre scale. And the fountain dwindles, the sunlight seems to pale. Time is a dream, he thinks, a destroying dream. It lays great cities in dust, it fills the seas. It covers the face of beauty and tumbles walls. Where was the woman he loved? Where was his youth? Where was the dream that burned his brain like fire? Even a dream grows gray at last and falls. He opened his book once more beside the window and read the printed words upon that page. The sunlight touched his hand. His eyes moved slowly, the quiet words enchanted time and age. Death is never an ending, death is a change. Death is beautiful, for death is strange. Death is one dream out of another flowing. Death is a chorded music softly going by sweet transition from key to richer key. Death is a meeting place of sea and sea. Section 6. Adele and Davis She turned her head on the pillow and cried once more, and drawing a shaken breath and closing her eyes, to shut out, if she could, this dingy room, the wigs and costumes scattered around the floor, yellows and greens in the dark, she walked again those nightmare streets which she had walked so often. Here at a certain corner, under an arc lamp, blown by a bitter wind, she stopped and looked in through the brilliant windows of a drug store, and wondered if she dared to ask for poison. But it was late. Few customers were there. The eyes of all the clerks would freeze upon her, and she would wilt and cry here by the river. She listened to the water slapping the wall, and felt queer fascination in its blackness. But it was cold. The little waves looked cruel. The stars were keen, and a windy dash of spray struck her cheek and withered her veins, and so she dragged herself once more to home and bed. Paul hadn't guessed it yet, though twice already she'd fainted, once the first time on the stage. So she must tell him soon, or else get out. How could she say it? That was the hideous thing. She'd rather die than say it, and all the trouble. Months when she couldn't earn a cent, and then, if he refused to marry her, well, what? She saw him laughing, making a foolish joke, his gray eyes turning quickly, and the words fled from her tongue. She saw him sitting silent, brooding over his morning coffee, maybe, and tried again. She bit her lips and trembled and looked away and said, Say, Paul boy, listen, there's something I must tell you. There she stopped, wondering what he'd say. What would he say? Spring it, kid. Don't look so serious. But what I've got to say is serious. Then she could see how suddenly he would sober. His eyes would darken. He'd look so terrifying. He always did. And what could she do but cry? Perhaps then he would guess. Perhaps he wouldn't. And if he didn't but asked her what's the matter, she knew she'd never tell, just say she was sick. And after that, when would she dare again? And what would he do, even suppose she told him? If it were Felix, if it were only Felix, she wouldn't mind so much. But as it was, bitterness choked her. She had half a mind to pay out Felix for never having liked her, by making people think that it was he. She'd write a letter to someone before she died, just saying, Felix did it and wouldn't marry, and then she'd die. But that was hard on Paul. 
Paul would never forgive her, he'd never forgive her. Sometimes she almost thought Paul really loved her. She saw him look reproachfully at her coffin. And then she closed her eyes and walked again those nightmare streets that she had walked so often. Under an arc lamp swinging in the wind she stood and stared in through a drugstore window, watching a clerk wrap up a little pillbox. But it was late. No customers were there. Pitiless eyes would freeze her secret in her. And then what poison would she dare to ask for? And if they asked her why, what would she say? Section 7. Two Lovers, Overtones Two lovers here at the corner by the steeple. Two lovers blow together like music blowing. And the crowd dissolves about them like a sea. Recurring waves of sound break vaguely about them. They drift from wall to wall, from tree to tree. Well, am I late? Upward they look and laugh. They look at the great clock's golden hands. They laugh and talk, not knowing what they say. Only their words like music seem to play, and seeming to walk, they tread strange sarabands. I brought you this. The soft words float like stars down the smooth heaven of her memory. She stands again by a garden wall. The peach tree is in bloom. Pink blossoms fall. Water sings from an open tap. The bees glisten and murmur among the trees. Someone calls from the house. She does not answer. Backward she leans her head and dreamily smiles at the peach tree leaves where through she sees an infinite May sky spread, a vault profoundly blue. The voice from the house fades far away. The glistening leaves more vaguely ripple and sway. The tap is closed. The water ceases to hiss. Silence blue sky and then i brought you this she turns again and smiles he does not know she smiles from long ago she turns to him and smiles sunlight above him roars like a vast invisible sea gold is beaten before him shrill bells of silver he is released of weight his body is free he lifts his arms to swim dark years like sinister tides coil under him the lazy sea waves crumble along the beach with a whirring sound like wind in bells. He lies outstretched on the yellow wind-worn sands, reaching his lazy hands among the golden grains and sea-white shells. One white rose, or is it pink today? They pause and smile, not caring what they say, if only they may talk. The crowd flows past them like dividing waters. Dreaming they stand, dreaming they walk. Pink today. Face turns to dream bright face, Green leaves rise round them, sunshine settles upon them. Water in drops of silver falls from the rose. She smiles at a face that smiles through leaves from the mirror. She breathes the fragrance, her dark eyes close. Time is dissolved. It blows like a little dust. Time like a flurry of rain patters and passes, starring the window pane. Once long ago, one night, she saw the lightning with long blue quiver of light ripping the darkness and as she turned in terror a soft face leaned above her leaned softly down softly around her a breath of roses was blown she sank in waves of quiet she seemed to float in a sea of silence and soft steps grew remote well let us walk in the park the sun is warm we'll sit on a bench and talk they turn and glide the crowd of faces wavers and breaks and flows. Look how the oak tops turn to gold in the sunlight. Look how the tower is changed and glows. Two lovers move in the crowd like a link of music. We press upon them, we hold them and let them pass. A chord of music strikes us and straight we tremble. We tremble like wind-blown grass. What was this dream we had, a dream of music? Music that rose from the opening earth like magic and shook its beauty upon us and died away. The long cold streets extend once more before us. The red sun drops, the walls grow gray. Section 8. The Box with Silver Handles Well, it was two days after my husband died. Two days. And the earth still raw above him. And I was sweeping the carpet in their hall, in number four, the room with the red wallpaper. Some chorus girls and men were singing that song. They'll soon be lighting candles round a box with silver handles. And hearing them sing it, I started to cry. Just then he came along and stopped on the stairs and turned and looked at me. 
and took the cigar from his mouth and sort of smiled and said say what's the matter and then came down where i was leaning against the wall and touched my shoulder and put his arm around me and i was so sad thinking about it thinking that it was raining and a cold night with jim so unaccustomed to being dead that i was happy to have him sympathize to feel his arm and leaned against him and cried and before i knew it he got me into a room where a table was set and no one there and sat me down on a sofa and held me close and talked to me telling me not to cry that it was all right he'd look after me but not to cry my eyes were getting red which didn't make me pretty and he was so nice that when he turned my face between his hands and looked at me with those blue eyes of his and smiled and leaned and kissed me somehow i couldn't tell him not to do it somehow i didn't mind i let him kiss me and closed my eyes well that was how it started for when my heart was eased with crying and grief had passed and left me quiet somehow it seemed as if it wasn't honest to change my mind to send him away or say i hadn't meant it and anyway it seemed so hard to explain and so we sat and talked not talking much but meaning as much in silence as in words there in that empty room with palms about us that private dining room and as we sat there i felt my future changing day by day with unknown streets opening left and right new streets with farther lights new taller houses doors swinging into hallways filled with light half open luminous windows with white curtains streaming out in the night in sudden music and thinking of this and through it half remembering a quick and horrible death my husband's eyes the broken plastered walls my boy asleep it seemed as if my brain would break in two my voice began to tremble and when i stood and told him i must go and said good night i couldn't see the end how would it end would he return tomorrow or would he not and did i want him to or would i rather look for another job he took my shoulders between his hands and looked down into my eyes and smiled and said good night if he had kissed me that would have well i don't know but he didn't and so i went downstairs then half elated hoping to close the door before that party in number four should sing that song again they'll soon be lighting candles round a box with silver handles and sure enough i did i faced the darkness and my eyes were filled with tears and i was happy section nine interlude the days the nights flow one by one above us the hours go silently over our lifted faces we are like dreamers who walk beneath the sea beneath high walls we flow in the sun together we sleep we wake we laugh we pursue we flee we sit at tables and sip our morning coffee we read the papers for tales of lust or crime the door swings shut behind the latest comer we set our watches regard the time what have we done i close my eyes remember the great machine whose sinister brain before me smote and smote with a rhythmic beat my hands have torn down walls the stone and plaster i dropped great beams to the dusty street my eyes are worn with measuring cloths of purple and golden cloths and wavering cloths and pale i dream of a crowd of faces white with menace hands reach up to tear me my brain will fail here where the walls go down beneath our picks these walls whose windows gap against the sky atom by atom of flesh and brain and marble will build a glittering tower before we die the young boy whistles hurrying down the street the young girl hums beneath her breath one goes out to beauty and does not know it and one goes out to death section ten sudden death number four the girl who died on the table the girl with golden hair the purpling body lies on the polished marble we open the throat and lay the thyroid bare one who held the ether cone remembers her dark blue frightened eyes he heard the sharp breath quiver and saw her breast more hurriedly fall and rise her hands made futile gestures she turned her head fighting for breath her cheeks were flushed to scarlet and suddenly she lay dead and all the dreams that hurried along her veins came to the darkness of a sudden wall confusion ran among them they whirled and clamoured they fell they rose they struck they shouted till at last a pallor of silence hushed them all what was her name 
Where had she walked that morning? Through what dark forest came her feet? Along what sunlit walls, what peopled street? Backward he dreamed along a chain of days. He saw her go her strange and secret ways, Waking and sleeping noon and night. She sat by a mirror braiding her golden hair. She read a story by candlelight. Her shadow ran before her along the street. She walked with rhythmic feet, turned a corner, descended a stair. She bought a paper, held it to scan the headlines, smiled for a moment at seagulls high in sunlight, and drew deep breaths of air. Days passed, bright clouds of days. Nights passed, and music murmured within the walls of lighted windows. She lifted her face to the light and danced. The dancers wreathed and grouped in moving patterns, clustered, receded, streamed, advanced. Her dress was purple, her slippers were golden. Her eyes were blue, and a purple orchid opened its golden heart on her breast. She leaned to the surly languor of lazy music, leaned on her partner's arm to rest. The violins were weaving a weft of silver, the horns were weaving a lustrous breed of gold, and time was caught in a glistening pattern, time too elusive to hold. Shadows of leaves fell over her face and sunlight. She turned her face away. Nearer she moved to a crouching darkness with every step and day. Death, who at first had thought of her only an instant, at a great distance across the night, smiled from a window upon her and followed her slowly from purple light to light. Once in her dreams he spoke out clearly, crying, I am the murderer, death. I am the lover who keeps his appointment at the doors of breath. She rose and stared at her own reflection, half dreading there to find the dark-eyed ghost waiting beside her, or reaching from behind to lay pale hands upon her shoulders, or was this in her mind? She combed her hair. The sunlight glimmered along the tossing strands. Was there a stillness in this hair? A quiet in these hands? Death was a dream. It could not change these eyes, blow out their light or turn this mouth to dust. She combed her hair and sang she would live forever. Leaves flew past her window along a gust, and graves were dug in the earth, and coffins passed, and music ebbed with the ebbing hours, and dreams went along her veins and scattering clouds through streaming shadows on walls and towers. Section 11 Snow falls, the sky is gray, and sullenly glares with purple lights in the canyon street. The fiery sign on the dark tower wreaths and flares. The trodden grass in the park is covered with white. The streets grow silent beneath our feet. The city dreams it forgets its past tonight. And one from his high bright window looking down over the enchanted whiteness of the town, seeing through worlds of white the vague gray towers, desires like this to forget what will not pass. The littered papers, the dust, the tarnished grass, Gray death, stale ugliness, and sodden hours. Deep in his heart old bells are beaten again. Slurred bells of grief and pain. Dull echoes of hideous times and poisonous places. He desires to drown in a cold white piece of snow. He desires to forget a million faces. In one room breathes a woman who dies of hunger. The clock ticks slowly and stops. And no one winds it. In one room fade gray violets in a vase. Snowflakes faintly hiss and melt on the window. In one room, minute by minute, the flutist plays the lamp-lit page of music, the tireless scales. His hands are trembling, his short breath fails. In one room, silently, lover looks upon lover and thinks the air is fire. The drunkard swears and touches the harlot's heartstrings with the sudden hand of desire. And one goes late in the streets and thinks of murder, And one lies staring and thinks of death, And one who has suffered clenches her hands despairing And holds her breath. Who are all these who flow in the veins of the city, Coil and revolve and dream, vanish or gleam? Some mount up to the brain and flower in fire, Some are destroyed, some die, some slowly stream. And the new are born who desire to destroy the old, and fires are kindled and quenched, and dreams are broken, and walls flung down. And the slow night whirls in snow over towers of dreamers, and whiteness hushes the town. 
End of part two. Recording by expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part three of the House of Dust, a symphony by Conrad Aiken. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part three. Section one. As evening falls and the yellow lights leap one by one along high walls and along black streets that glisten as if with rain, the muted city seems like one in a restless sleep who lies in dreams of vague desires and memories and half-forgotten pain. Along dark veins like lights the quick dreams run, flash, are extinguished, flash again, to mingle and glow at last in the enormous brain and die away as evening falls a dream dissolves these insubstantial walls a myriad secretly gliding lights lie bare the lovers rise the harlot combs her hair the dead man's face grows blue in the dizzy lamplight the watchman climbs the stair the bank defaulter leers at a chaos of figures and runs among them and is beaten down the sick man coughs and hears the chisels ringing the tired clown sees the enormous crowd a million faces motionless in their places ready to laugh and seize and crush and tear the dancer smooths her hair laces her golden slippers and runs through the door to dance once more hearing swift music like an enchantment rise feeling the praise of a thousand eyes as darkness falls the walls grow luminous and warm the walls tremble and glow with the lives within them moving moving like music secret and rich and warm how shall we live to-night where shall we turn to what new light or darkness yearn a thousand winding stairs lead down before us and one by one in myriads we descend by lamp-lit flowered walls long balustrades through half-lit halls which reach no end section two the screen maiden you read what is it then that you are reading what music moves so silently in your mind your bright hand turns the page i watch you from my window unsuspected you move in an alien land a silent age the poet what was his name toque toque the poet walked alone in a cold late rain and thought his grief was like the crying of sea-birds for his lover was dead he never would love again rain in the dreams of the mind rain forever rain in the sky of the heart rain in the willows but then he saw this face this face like flame this quiet lady this portrait by hiroshigi and took it home with him and with it came what unexpected changes subtle as weather the dark room cold as rain grew faintly fragrant stirred with a stir of april warmed its corners with light again and smoke of incense whirled about this portrait and the quiet lady there so young so quietly smiling with calm hands seemed ready to loose her hair and smile and lean from the picture or say one word the word already clear which seemed to rise like light between her eyelids he held his breath to hear and smiled for shame and drank a cup of wine and held a candle and searched her face through all the little shadows to see what secret might give so warm a grace was it the quiet mouth restrained a little the eyes half turned aside the jade ring on her wrist still almost swinging the secret was denied he chose his favorite pen and drew these verses and slept and as he slept a dream came into his heart his lover entered and chided him and wept and in the morning waking he remembered and thought the dream was strange why did his darkened lover rise from the garden he turned and felt a change as if a someone hidden smiled and watched him yet there was only sunlight there until he saw those young eyes quietly smiling and held his breath to stare and could have sworn her cheek had turned a little had slightly turned away sunlight dozed on the floor he sat and wondered nor left his room that day and that day and for many days thereafter he sat alone and thought no lady had ever lived so beautiful as hiroshigi wrought or if she lived no matter in what country 
by what far river or hill or lonely sea he would look in every face until he found her there was no other as fair as she and before her quiet face he burned soft incense and brought her every day boughs of the peach or almond or snow-white cherry and somehow she seemed to say that silent lady young and quietly smiling that she was happy there and sometimes seeing this he started to tremble and desired to touch her hair to lay his palm along her hand touch faintly with delicate fingertips the ghostly smile that seemed to hover and vanish upon her lips until he knew he loved this quiet lady and night by night a dread leered at his dreams for he knew that hiroshigi was many centuries dead and the lady too was dead and all who knew her dead and long turned to dust the thin moon waxed and waned and left him paler the peach leaves flew in a gust and he would surely have died but there one day a wise man white with age stared at the portrait and said this hiroshigi knew more than archimage cunningly drew the body and called the spirit till partly it entered there sometimes at death it entered the portrait wholly do all i say with care and she you love may come to you when you call her so then this ghost tokay ran in the sun bought wine of a hundred merchants and alone at the end of day entered the darkening room and faced the portrait and saw the quiet eyes gleaming and young in the dusk and held the wine cup and knelt and did not rise and said aloud rosan will you drink this wine said it three times aloud and at the third the faint blue smoke of incense rose to the walls in a cloud and the lips moved faintly and the eyes and the calm hands stirred and suddenly with a sigh the quiet lady came slowly down from the portrait and stood while worlds went by and lifted her young white hands and took the wine cup and the poet trembled and said rosan will you stay forever yes i will stay but what when i am dead when you are dead your spirit will find my spirit and then we shall die no more music came down upon them and spring returning they remembered worlds before and years went over the earth and over the sea and lovers were born and spoke and died but forever in sunlight went these two immortal tokay and the quiet bride section three haunted chambers the lamp-lit page is turned the dream forgotten the music changes tone you wake remember deep worlds you lived before deep worlds hereafter of leaf on falling leaf music on music rain and sorrow and wind and dust and laughter helen was late and miriam came too soon joseph was dead his wife and children starving elaine was married and soon to have a child you dreamed last night of fiddler crabs with fiddles they played a buzzing melody and you smiled tomorrow what and what of yesterday through soundless labyrinths of dream you pass through many doors to the one door of all soon as it's opened we shall hear a music or see a skeleton fall we walk with you where is it that you lead us we climb the muffled stairs beneath high lanterns we descend again we grope through darkened cells you say this darkness here will slowly kill me it creeps and weighs upon me is full of bells this is the thing remembered i would forget no matter where i go how soft i tread this windy gesture menaces me with death fatigue it says and points its finger at me touches my throat and stops my breath my fans my jewels the portrait of my husband the torn certificate for my daughter's grave these are but mortal seconds in immortal time they brush me fade away like drops of water they signify no crime let us retrace our steps i have deceived you nothing is here i could not frankly tell you no hint of guilt or faithlessness or threat dreams they are madness staring eyes illusion let us return hear music and forget section four illicit of what she said to me that night no matter the strange thing came next day my brain was full of music something she played me i couldn't remember it all but phrases of it wreathed and wreathed among faint memories 
seeking for something trying to tell me something urging to restlessness verging on grief i tried to play the tune from memory but memory failed the chords and discords climbed and found no resolution only hung there and left me morbid where then had i heard it what secret dusty chamber was it hinting dust it said dust and dust and sunlight a cold clear april evening snow bedraggled rain-worn snow dappling the hideous grass and someone walking alone and someone saying that all must end for the time had come to go these were the phrases but behind beneath them a greater shadow moved and in this shadow i stood and guessed was it the blue-eyed lady the one who always danced in golden slippers and had i danced with her upon this music or was it further back the unplumbed twilight of childhood no much recenter than that you know without my telling you how sometimes a word or name eludes you and you seek it through running ghosts of shadow leaping at it lying in wait for it to spring upon it spreading faint snares for it of sense or sound until of a sudden as if in a phantom forest you hear it see it flash among the branches and scarcely knowing how suddenly have it well it was so i followed down this music glimpsing a face in darkness hearing a cry remembering days forgotten moods exhausted corners in sunlight puddles reflecting stars until of a sudden and least of all suspected the thing resolved itself and i remembered an april afternoon eight years ago or was it nine no matter call it nine a room in which the last of sunlight faded a vase of violets fragrance and white curtains and she who played the same thing later playing she played this tune and in the middle of it abruptly broke it off letting her hands fall in her lap she sat there so a moment with shoulders drooped then lifted up a rose one great white rose wide open like a lotus and pressed it to her cheek and closed her eyes you know we've got to end this miriam loves you if she should ever know or even guess it what would she do listen i'm not absurd i'm sure of it if you had eyes for women to understand them which you've never had you'd know it too so went this colloquy half humorous with undertones of pathos half grave half flippant while her fingers softly felt for this tune played it and let it fall now note by singing note now chord by chord repeating phrases with a kind of pleasure was it symbolic of the woman's weakness that she could neither break it nor conclude it paused and wandered paused again while she perplexed and tired half told me i must go half asked me if i thought i ought to go well april passed with many other evenings evenings like this with later suns and warmer with violets always there and fragrant curtains and she was right and miriam found it out and after that when eight deep years had passed or nine we met once more by accident but was it just by accident i wonder she played this tune or what then was intended section five melody in a restaurant the cigarette smoke loops and slides above us dipping and swirling as the waiter passes you strike a match and stare upon the flame the tiny fire leaps in your eyes a moment and dwindles away as silently as it came this melody you say has certain voices they rise like nereids from a river singing lift white faces and dive to darkness again wherever you go you bear this river with you a leaf falls and it flows and you have pain so says the tune to you but what to me what to the waiter as he pours your coffee the violinist who suavely draws his bow that man who folds his paper overhears it a thousand dreams revolve and fall and flow someone there is who sees a virgin stepping down marble stairs to a deep tomb of roses at the last moment she lifts remembering eyes green leaves blow down the place is checked with shadows a long-drawn murmur of rain goes down the skies and oaks are stripped and bare and smoke with lightning and clouds are blown and torn upon high forests and the great sea shakes its walls and then falls silence 
and through long silence falls this melody once more down endless stairs she goes as once before so says the tune to him but what to me what are the worlds i see what shapes fantastic terrible dreams i go my secret way down secret alleys my errand is not so simple as it seems section six portrait of one dead this is the house on one side there is darkness on one side there is light into the darkness you may lift your lanterns oh any number it will still be night and here are echoing stairs to lead you downward to long sonorous halls and here is spring forever at these windows with roses on the walls this is her room on one side there is music on one side not a sound at one step she could move from love to silence feel myriad darkness coiling round and here are balconies from which she heard you your steady footsteps on the stair and here the glass in which she saw your shadow as she unbound her hair here is the room with ghostly walls dissolving the twilight room in which she called you lover and the floorless room in which she called you friend so many times in doubt she ran between them through windy corridors of darkening end here she could stand with one dim light above her and hear far music like a sea in caverns murmur away at hollowed walls of stone and here in a roofless room where it was raining she bore the patient sorrow of rain alone your words were walls which suddenly froze around her your words were windows large enough for moonlight too small to let her through your letters fragrant cloisters faint with music the music that assuaged her there was you how many times she heard your step ascending yet never saw your face she heard them turn again ring slowly fainter till silence swept the place why had you gone the door perhaps mistaken you would go elsewhere the deep walls were shaken a certain rose-leaf sent without intention became with time a woven web of fire she wore it and was warm a certain hurried glance let fall at parting became with time the flashings of a storm yet there was nothing asked no hint to tell you of secret idols carved in secret chambers from all you did and said nothing was done until at last she knew you nothing was known till somehow she was dead how did she die you say she died of poison simple and swift and much to be regretted you did not see her pass so many thousand times from light to darkness pausing so many times before her glass you did not see how many times she hurried to lean from certain windows vainly hoping passionate still for beauty remembered spring you did not know how long she clung to music you did not hear her sing did she then make the choice and step out bravely from sound to silence close herself those windows or was it true instead that darkness moved for once and so possessed her will never know you say for she is dead section seven porcelain you see that porcelain ranged there in the window platters and soup plates done with pale pink rosebuds and tiny violets and wreaths of ivy see how the pattern clings to the gleaming edges their works of art minutely seen and felt each petal done devoutly is it failure to spend your blood like this study them you will see there in the porcelain if you stare hard enough a sort of swimming of lights and shadows ghosts within a crystal my brain unfolding there you'll see me sitting day after day close to a certain window looking down sometimes to see the people sometimes my wife comes there to speak to me sometimes the grey cat waves his tail around me goldfish swim in a bowl glisten in sunlight dilate to a gorgeous size blow delicate bubbles drowse among dark green weeds on rainy days you'll see a gaslight shedding light behind me an eye-shade round my forehead there i sit twirling the tiny brushes in my paint cups painting the pale pink rosebuds minute violets exquisite wreaths of dark green ivy leaves on this leaf goes a dream i dreamed last night of two soft patterned toads i thought them stones until they hopped and then a great black spider 
tarantula perhaps a hideous thing it crossed the room in one tremendous leap here as i coil the stems between two leaves it is as if dwindling to atomy size i cried the secret between two universes a friend of mine took hashish once and said just as he fell asleep he had a dream though with his eyes wide open and felt or saw or knew himself a part of marvellous slowly wreathing intricate patterns plane upon plane depth upon coiling depth amazing leaves folding one on another voluted grasses twists and curves and spirals all of it darkly moving as for me i need no hashish for it it's too easy soon as i shut my eyes i set out walking in a monstrous jungle of monstrous pale pink rose leaves violets purple as death dripping with water and ivy leaves as big as clouds above me here in a simple pattern of separate violets with scalloped edges gilded here you have me thinking of something else my wife you know there's something lacking force or will or passion i don't know what it is and so sometimes when i am tired or haven't slept three nights or it is cloudy with low threat of rain i get uneasy just like poplar trees ruffling their leaves and i begin to think of poor pauline so many years ago and that delicious night where is she now i meant to write but she has moved by this time and then besides she might find out i'm married well there is more i'm getting old and timid the years have gnawed my will i've lost my nerve i never strike out boldly as i used to but sit here painting violets and remember that thrilling night photographers she said asked her to pose for them her eyes and forehead dark brown eyes and a smooth and pallid forehead were thought so beautiful and so they were pauline these violets are like words remembered darling she whispered darling 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 well i suppose such days can come but once lord how happy we were here if you only knew it, it is a story here in these leaves i stopped my work to tell it and then when i had finished went on thinking a man i saw on a train i was still a boy who killed himself by diving against a wall here is a recollection of my wife when she was still my sweetheart years ago it's funny how things change just change by growing without an effort and here are trivial things a chill an errand forgotten a cut while shaving a friend of mine who tells me he is married or is that last so trivial well no matter this is the sort of thing you'll see of me if you look hard enough this in its way is a kind of fame my life arranged before you in scrolls of leaves rosebuds violets ivy clustered or wreathed on plate and cup and platter sometimes i say i'm just like john the baptist you have my head before you on a platter section eight coffins interlude wind blows snow falls the great clock in its tower ticks with reverberant coil and tolls the hour at the deep sudden stroke the pigeons fly the fine snow flutes the cracks between the flagstones we close our coats and hurry and search the sky we are like music each voice of it pursuing a golden separate dream remote persistent climbing to fire receding to hoarse despair what do you whisper brother what do you tell me we pass each other are lost and do not care one mounts up to beauty serenely singing forgetful of the steps that cry behind him one drifts slowly down from a waking dream one foreseeing lingers forever unmoving upward and downward past him there we stream one has death in his eyes and walks more slowly death among jonquils told him a freezing secret a cloud blows over his eyes he ponders earth he sees in the world a forest of sunlit jonquils a slow black poison huddles beneath that mirth death from street to alley from door to window cries out his news of unplumbed worlds approaching of a cloud of darkness soon to destroy the tower but why comes death he asks in a world so perfect or why the minutes gray in the golden hour music a sudden glissando sinister troubled a drift of wind-torn petals before him passes down jangled streets and dies 
the bodies of old and young of maimed and lovely are slowly borne to earth with a dirge of cries down cobbled streets they come down huddled stairways through silent halls through carven golden doorways from freezing rooms as bare as rock the curtains are closed across deserted windows earth streams out of the shovel the pebbles knock mary whose hands rejoice to move in sunlight silent elaine grave anne who sang so clearly fugitive helen who loved and walked alone miriam too soon dead darkly remembered childless ruth who sorrowed but could not atone jean whose laughter flashed over depths of terror and eloise who desired to love but dared not doris who turned alone to the dark and cried they are blown away like wind-flung chords of music they drift away the sudden music has died and one with death in his eyes comes walking slowly and sees the shadow of death in many faces and thinks the world is strange he desires immortal music and spring forever and beauty that knows no change section nine cabaret we sit together and talk or smoke in silence you say but use no words this night is passing as other nights when we are dead will pass perhaps i misconstrue you you mean only how deathly pale my face looks in that glass you say we sit and talk of things important how many others like ourselves this instant mark the pendulum swinging against the wall how many others laughing sip their coffee or stare at mirrors and do not talk at all this is the moment so you would say in silence when suddenly we have had too much of laughter and a freezing stillness falls no word to say our mouths feel foolish for all the days hereafter what have we saved what news what tune what play we see each other as vain and futile tricksters posturing like bald apes before a mirror no pity dims our eyes how many others like ourselves this instant see how the great world wizens and are wise well you are right no doubt they fall these seconds when suddenly all's distempered vacuous ugly and even those most like angels creep for schemes the one you love leans forward smiles deceives you opens a door through which you see dark dreams but this is momentary or else enduring leads you with devious eyes through mists and poisons to horrible chaos or suicide or crime and all these others who at your conjuration grow pale feeling the skeleton touch of time or laughing sadly talk of things important or stare at mirrors startled to see their faces or drown in the waveless vacuum of their days suddenly as from sleep awake forgetting this nauseous dream take up their accustomed ways exhume the ghost of a joke renew loud laughter forget the moles above their sweethearts eyebrows lean to the music rise and dance once more in a rose festooned illusion with kindness in their eyes they say as we ourselves have said remember what wizardry this slow waltz works upon us and how it brings to mind forgotten things they say how strange it is that one such evening can wake vague memories of so many springs and so they go in a thousand crowded places they sit to smile and talk or rise to ragtime and for their pleasures agree or disagree with secret symbols they play on secret passions with cunning eyes they see the innocent word that sets remembrance trembling the dubious word that sets the scared heart beating the pendulum on the wall shakes down seconds they laugh at time dissembling or coil for a victim and do not talk at all section ten letter from time to time lifting his eyes he sees the soft blue starlight through the one small window the moon above black trees and clouds and venus and turns to write the clock behind ticks softly it is so long indeed since i have written two years almost your last is turning yellow that these first words i write seem cold and strange are you the man i knew or have you altered altered of course just as i too have altered and whether towards each other or more apart we cannot say i've just re-read your letter not through forgetfulness but more for pleasure 
Pondering much on all you say in it Of mystic consciousness, divine conversion, The sense of oneness with the infinite, Faith in the world, its beauty and its purpose. Well, you believe one must have faith in some sort, If one's to talk through this dark world contented. But is the world so dark? Or is it rather our own brute minds In which we hurry, trembling, through streets as yet unlighted? This, I think. You have been always, let me say, romantic, eager for color, for beauty, soon discontented with a world of dust and stones and flesh too ailing, even before the question grew to problem and drove you bickering into metaphysics. You met on lower planes the same great dragon, seeking release some fleeting satisfaction. In strange aesthetics you tried, as I remember, one after one strange cults, and some, too, morbid, but cruder first, more violent sensations, gorgeously carnal things conceived and acted with splendid animal thirst, then, by degrees, savoring all more delicate gradations in all that hue and tone may play on flesh, or thought on brain. You passed, if I may say so, from red and scarlet through morbid greens to mauve. Let us regard ourselves, you used to say, as instruments of music whereon our lives will play as we desire, and let us yield these subtle bodies and subtler brains and nerves to all experience plays. And so you went from subtle tune to subtler, each heard once, twice or thrice at the most tiring of each, and closing one by one your doors, drew in slowly through darkening labyrinths of feeling towards the central chamber which now you've reached. What, then's the secret of this ultimate chamber, or innermost, rather? If I see it clearly, it is the last and cunningest resort of one who has found this world of dust and flesh, this world of lamentations, death, injustice, sickness, humiliation, slow defeat, bareness and ugliness and iteration, too meaningless, or if it has a meaning, too tiresomely insistent on one meaning. Futility. This world I hear you saying with lifted chin and arm and outflung gesture, coldly imperious, this transient world, what has it then to give if not containing deep hints of nobler worlds? We know its beauties, momentary and trivial for the most part, perceived through flesh passing like flesh away, and know how much outweighed they are by darkness. We are like searchers in a house of darkness, a house of dust, we creep with little lanterns, throwing our tremulous arcs of light at random, now here, now there, seeing a plane, an angle, an edge, a curve, a wall, a broken stairway, leading to who knows what, but never seeing the whole at once. We grope our way a little and then grow tired. No matter what we touch, dust is the answer, dust, dust everywhere. If this were all, what were the use, you ask? But this is not. For why should we be seeking? Why should we bring this need to seek for beauty, to lift our minds if there were only dust? This is the central chamber you have come to. Turning your back to the world until you came to this deep room, and looked through rose-stained windows, and saw the hues of the world so sweetly changed. Well, in a measure so only do we all. I am not sure that you can be refuted, at the very last we all put faith in something. You in this ghost that animates your world, this ethical ghost, and I, you'll say, in reason, or sensuous beauty, or in my secret self, though as for that you put your faith in these as much as I do, and then, forsaking reason, ascending, you would say, to intuition. You predicate this ghost of yours as well. Of course you might have argued, and you should have, that no such deep appearance of design could shape our world without entailing purpose. For can design exist without a purpose, without conceiving mind? We are like children who find upon the sands beside a sea strange patterns drawn, circles, arcs, ellipses, molded in sand. Who put them there, we wonder? Did someone draw them here before we came, or was it just the sea? We pour upon them but find no answer, only suppositions, and if these perfect shapes are evidence of imminent mind, it is but circumstantial. We never come upon him at his work. 
He never troubles us. He stands aloof. Well, if he stands at all, is not concerned with what we are or do. You, if you like, may think he broods upon us, loves us, hates us, conceives some purpose of us. In so doing, you see, without much reason, will in law. I am content to say this world is ordered, happily so for us, by accident. We go our ways untroubled, save by laws of natural things. Who makes the more assumption? If we were wise, which God knows we are not, notice i call on god we'd plumb this riddle not in the world we see but in ourselves these brains of ours these delicate spinal clusters have limits why not learn them learn their cravings which of the two minds yours or mine is sound yours which scorn the world that gave it freedom until you manage to see that world as omen or mine which likes the world takes all for granted sorrow as much as joy and death as life you lean on dreams and take more credit for it. I stand alone. Well, I take credit too. You find your pleasure in being at one with all things, fusing in lambent dream, rising and falling, as all things rise and fall. I do that too. With reservations, I find more varied pleasure in understanding, and so find beauty even in this strange dream of yours you call the truth. Well, I have bored you, and it's growing late. For household news, what have you heard, I wonder? You must have heard that Paul was dead by this time. Of spinal cancer, nothing could be done. We found it out too late. His death has changed me, deflected much of me that lived as he lived, saddened me, slowed me down. Such things will happen. Life is composed of them, and it seems wisdom to see them clearly, meditate upon them, and understand what things flow out of them. Otherwise, all goes on here much as always. Why won't you come and see us in the spring and bring old times with you? If you could see me sitting here by the window watching Venus go down behind my neighbor's poplar branches, just where you used to sit, I'm sure you'd come. This year, they say, the springtime will be early. Section 11. Conversation Undertones. What shall we talk of? Lipo? Hoxai? You narrow your long, dark eyes to fascinate me. You smile a little. Outside the night goes by. I walk alone in a forest of ghostly trees. Your pale hands rest palm downwards on your knees. These lines, converging, they suggest such distance. The soul is drawn away beyond horizons. Lured out to what? One dares not think. Sometimes I glimpse these infinite perspectives in intimate talk with such as you and shrink. One feels so petty. One feels such emptiness. You mimic horror, let fall your lifted hand and smile at me. With brooding tenderness alone on darkened waters I fall and rise. Slow waves above me break, faint waves of cries. And then these colors, but who would dare describe them? this faint rose coral pink this green pistachio so insubstantial like the dim ghostly things two lovers find in love's still twilight chambers old peacock fans and fragrant silks and rings rings let us say drawn from the hapless fingers of some great lady many centuries nameless or is that too sepulchral dulled with dust and necklaces that crumble if you touch them in gold brocades that breathed on fall to rust. No, I am wrong. It is not these I sought for. Why did they come to mind? You understand me. You know these strange vagaries of the brain. I walk alone in a forest of ghostly trees. Your pale hands rest palm downwards on your knees. These strange vagaries of yours are all too plain. But why perplex ourselves with tedious problems of art or such things? while we sit here living with all that's in our secret hearts to say hearts your pale hand softly strokes the satin you play deep music know well what you play you stroke the satin with thrilling of fingertips you smile with faintly perfumed lips you loose your thoughts like birds brushing our dreams with soft and shadowy words we know your words are foolish yet sit here bound in tremulous webs of sound how beautiful is intimate talk like this it is as if we dissolve gray walls between us step through the solid portals become but shadows to hear a hidden music our own vast shadows 
lean to a giant size on the windy walls or dwindle away we hear our soft footfalls echo forever behind us ghostly clear music sings far off flows suddenly near and dies away like rain we walk through subterranean caves again vaguely above us feeling a shadowy weight of frescoes on the ceiling strange half-lit things soundless grotesques with writhing claws and wings and here a beautiful face looks down upon us and someone hurries before unseen and sings have we seen all i wonder in these chambers or is there yet some gorgeous vault arched low where sleeps an amazing beauty we do not know the question falls we walk in silence together thinking of that deep vault and of its secret this lamp these books this fire are suddenly blown away in a whistling darkness deep walls crash down in the whirlwind of desire section twelve which is sabbath now when the moon slid under the cloud and the cold clear dark of starlight fell he heard in his blood the well-known bell tolling slowly in heaves of sound slowly beating slowly beating shaking its pulse on the stagnant air sometimes it swung completely round horribly gasping as if for breath falling down with an anguished cry now the red bat he mused will fly something is marked this night for death and while he mused along his blood flew ghostly voices remote and thin they rose in the cavern of his brain like ghosts they died away again and hands upon his heart were laid and music upon his flesh was played until as he was bidden to do he walked the wood he so well knew through the cold dew he moved his feet and heard far off as under the earth discordant music in shuddering tones screams of laughter horrible mirth clapping of hands and thudding of drums and the long-drawn wail of one in pain to-night he thought i shall die again we shall die again in the red-eyed fire to meet on the edge of the wood beyond with a placid gaze of fed desire he walked and behind the whisper of trees in and out one walked with him she parted the branches and peered at him through lowered lids her two eyes burned he heard her breath he saw her hand wherever he turned his way she turned kept pace with him now fast now slow moving her white knees as he moved this is the one i have always loved this is the one whose bat soul comes to dance with me flesh to flesh in the starlight dance of horns and drums the walls and roofs the scarlet towers sank down behind a rushing sky he heard a sweet song just begun abruptly shatter in tones and die it whirled away cold silence fell and again came tollings of a bell this air is alive with witches the white witch rides swifter than smoke on the starlit wind in the clear darkness while the moon hides they come like dreams like something remembered let us hurry beloved take my hand forget these things that trouble your eyes forget forget our flesh is changed lighter than smoke we wreathe and rise the cold air hisses between us beloved beloved what was the word you said something about clear music that sang through water i cannot remember the storm drops break on the leaves something was lost in the darkness someone is dead someone lies in the garden and grieves look how the branches are tossed in this air flinging their green to the earth black clouds rush to devour the stars in the sky the moon stares down like a half-closed eye the leaves are scattered the birds are blown oaks crash down in the darkness we run from our windy shadows we are running alone the moon was darkened across it flew the swift gray tenebrous shape he knew like a thing of smoke it crossed the sky the witch he said and he heard a cry and another came and another came and one grown duskily red with blood floated an instant across the moon hung like a dull fantastic flame the earth has veins they throb to-night the earth swells warm beneath my feet the tips of the trees grow red and bright the leaves are swollen i feel them beat they press together they push and sigh they listen to hear the great bat cry the great red bat with the woman's face hurry he said and pace for pace that other who trod the dark with him crushed the live leaves 
reached out white hands and closed her eyes the better to see the priests with claws the lovers with hooves the fire-lit rock the sarabands i am here she said the bow he broke was it the snapping bow that spoke i am here she said the white thigh gleam cold in starlight among dark leaves the head thrown backward as he had dreamed the shadowy red deep jasper mouth and the lifted hands and the virgin breasts passed beside him and vanished away i am here she cried he answered stay and laughter arose and near and far answering laughter rose and died who is there in the dark he cried he stood in terror and heard a sound of terrible hooves on the hollow ground they rushed were still a silence fell and he heard deep tollings of a bell look beloved why do you hide your face look in the centre there above the fire they are bearing the boy who blasphemed love they are playing a piercing music upon him with a bow of living wire the virgin harlot sings she leans above the beautiful anguished body and draws slow music from those strings they dance around him they fling red roses upon him they trample him with their naked feet his cries are lost in laughter their feet grow dark with his blood they beat and beat they dance upon him until he cries no more have we not heard that cry before somewhere somewhere beside a sea in the green evening beneath green clouds in a copper sky was it you was it i they have quenched the fires they dance in the darkness the satyrs have run among them to seize and tear look he has caught one by the hair she screams and falls he bears her away with him and the night grows full of whistling wings far off one voice serene and sweet rises and sings by the clear waters where once i died in the calm evening bright with stars where have i heard these words was it you who sang them it was long ago let us hurry beloved the hard hooves trample the tree-tops tremble and glow in the clear dark on silent wings the red bat hovers beneath her moon she drops through the fragrant night and clings fast in the shadow with hands like claws with soft eyes closed and mouth that feeds to the young white flesh that warmly bleeds the maidens circle in dance and raise from lifting throats a soft sung praise their knees and breasts are white and bare they have hung pale roses in their hair each of them as she dances by peers at the blood with a narrowed eye see how the red wing wraps him round see how the white youth struggles in vain the white arms writhe in a soundless pain he writhes in the soft red veiny wings but still she whispers upon him and clings this is the secret feast of love look well look well before it dies see how the red one trembles above see how quiet the white one lies wind through the trees and a voice is heard singing far off the dead leaves fall by the clear waters where once i died in the calm evening bright with stars one among numberless avatars i wedded a mortal a mortal bride and lay on the stones and gave my flesh and entered the hunger of him i loved how shall i ever escape this mesh or be from my lover's body removed dead leaves stream through the hurrying air and the menads dance with flying hair the priest with hooves the lovers with horns rise in the starlight one by one they draw their knives on the spurting throats they smear the column with blood of goats they dabble the blood on hair and lips and wait like stones for the moon's eclipse they stand like stones and stare at the sky where the moon leers down like a half-closed eye in the green moonlight still they stand while wind flows over the darkened sand and brood on the soft forgotten things that filled their shadowy yesterdays where are the breasts the scarlet wings they gaze at each other with troubled gaze and then as the shadow closes the moon shout and strike with their hooves the ground and rush through the dark and fill the night with the slowly dying clamour of sound there where the great walls crowd the stars there by the black wind riven walls in a grove of twisted leafless trees who are these pilgrims who are these these three the one of whom stands upright while one lies weeping and one of them crawls the face that he turned was a wounded face 
i heard the dripping of blood on stones hooves had trampled and torn this place and the leaves were strewn with blood and bones sometimes i think beneath my feet the warm earth stretches herself and sighs listen i heard the slow heart beat i will lie on this grass as a lover lies and reach to the north and reach to the south and seek in the darkness for her mouth beloved beloved where the slow waves of the wind shatter pale foam among great trees under the hurrying stars under the heaving arches like one whirled down under shadowy seas i run to find you i run and cry where are you where are you it is i it is i it is your eyes i seek it is your windy hair your starlight body that breathes in the darkness there under the darkness i feel you stirring is this you is this you bats in this air go whirring and this soft mouth that darkly meets my mouth is this the soft mouth i knew darkness and wind in the tortured trees and the patter of dew dance 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 till the brain is red with speed dance till you fall lift your torches kiss your lovers until they bleed backward i draw your anguished hair until your eyes are stretched with pain backward i press you until you cry your lips grow white i kiss you again i will take a torch and set you afire i will break your body and fling it away look you are trembling lie still beloved lock your hands in my hair and say darling 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 all night long till the break of day is it your heart i hear beneath me or the far tolling of that tower the voices are still that cried around us the woods grow still for the sacred hour rise white lover the day draws near the grey trees lean to the east in fear by the clear waters where once i died beloved whose voice was this that cried by the clear waters that reached the sun by the clear waves that starward run i found love's body and lost his soul and crumbled in flame that should have annealed how shall i ever again be whole by what dark waters shall i be healed silence the red leaves one by one fall far off the menads run silence beneath my naked feet the veins of the red earth swell and beat the dead leaves sigh on the troubled air far off the menads bind their hair hurry beloved the day comes soon the fire is drawn from the heart of the moon the great bell cracks and falls at last the moon whirls out the sky grows still look how the white cloud crosses the stars and suddenly drops behind the hill your eyes are placid you smile at me we sit in the room by candlelight we peer in each other's veins and see no sign of the things we saw this night only a song is in your ears a song you have heard you think in dream the song which only the demon hears in the dark forest where menads scream by the clear waters where once i died in the calm evening bright with stars what do the strange words mean you say and touch my hand and turn away section thirteen the half-shut doors through which we heard that music are softly closed horns mutter down to silence the stars whirl out the night grows deep darkness settles upon us a vague refrain drowsily teases at the drowsy brain in numberless rooms we stretch ourselves and sleep where have we been what savage chaos of music whirls in our dreams we suddenly rise in darkness open our eyes cry out and sleep once more we dream we are numberless sea waves languidly foaming a warm white moonlit shore or clouds blown windily over a sky at midnight or chords of music scattered in hurrying darkness or a singing sound of rain we open our eyes and stare at the coiling darkness and enter our dreams again end of part three recording by expatriate in bangor maine part four of the house of dust a symphony by conrad aiken this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine.
Part 4 Section 1. Clairvoyant This envelope, you say, has something in it which once belonged to your dead son or something he knew was fond of, something he remembers? The soul flies far and we can only call it by things like these, a photograph, a letter, ribbon or charm or watch. Wind flows softly, the long, slow, even wind over the low roofs white with snow wind blows bearing cold clouds over the ocean one by one they melt and flow streaming one by one over trees and towers coiling and gleaming in shafts of sun wind flows bearing clouds the hurrying shadows flow under them one by one a spirit darkens before me it is the spirit which in the flesh you called your son a spirit young and strong and beautiful he says that he is happy, is much honoured, forgives and is forgiven. Rain and wind do not perplex him, storm and dust forgotten. The glittering wheels and wheels of time are broken and laid aside. Ask him why he did the thing he did. He is unhappy. This thing, he says, transcends you. Dust cannot hold what shines beyond the dust. What seems calamity is less than a sigh. What seems disgrace is nothing. Ask him if the one he hurt is there, and if she loves him still. He tells you she is there and loves him still, not as she did, but as all spirits love. A cloud of spirits has gathered about him, they praise him and call him, they do him honour. He is more beautiful, he shines upon them. Wind flows softly, the long, deep, tremulous wind over the low roofs, white with snow. Wind flows, bearing dreams, they gather and vanish. One by one they sing and flow. Over the outstretched lands of days remembered, Over remembered tower and wall, One by one they gather and talk in the darkness, Rise and glimmer and fall. Ask him why he did the thing he did, He knows I will understand. It is too late, he will not hear me, I have lost my power. Three times I've asked him, he will never tell me. God have mercy upon him, I will ask no more. Section 2. Death and a Derisive Chorus The door is shut. She leaves the curtained office, and down the grey-walled stairs comes trembling slowly towards the dazzling street. Her withered hand clings tightly to the railing. The long stairs rise and fall beneath her feet. Here in the brilliant sun we jostle, waiting to tear her secret out. We laugh, we hurry, we go our way, revolving, sinister, slow. She blinks in the sun and then steps faintly downward. We whirl her away, we shout, we spin, we flow. Where have you been, old lady? We know your secret. Voices jangle about her, jeers and laughter. She trembles, tries to hurry, averts her eyes. Tell us the truth, old lady, where have you been? She turns and turns, her brain grows dark with cries. Look at the old fool tremble. She's been paying, paying good money, too, to talk to spirits. She thinks she's heard a message from one dead. What did he tell you? Is he well and happy? Don't lie to us. We all know what he said. He said the one he murdered once still loves him. He says the wheels and wheels of time are broken, and dust and storm forgotten, and all forgiven. But what you asked, he wouldn't tell you, though. Ha ha! There's one thing you will never know. That's what you get for meddling so with heaven. Where have you been, old lady? Where are you going? We know, we know. She's been to gab with spirits. Look at the old fool, getting ready to cry. What have you got in an envelope, old lady? A lock of hair? An eyelash from his eye? How do you know the medium didn't fool you? Perhaps he had no spirit. Perhaps he killed it. Here she comes. The old fool's lost her son. What did he have? Blue eyes and golden hair? We know your secret. What's done is done. Look out, you'll fall, and fall, if you're not careful, right into an open grave. But what's the hurry? You don't think you will find him when you're dead. Cry, cry. Look at her mouth all twisted. Look at her eyes all red. We know you. Know your name and all about you. All you remember and think and all you scheme for. We tear your secret out. We leave you. Go laughingly down the street. Die if you want to. Die then if you're in such a hurry to know. She falls, we lift her head. The wasted body weighs nothing in our hands. Does no one know her? Was no one with her when she fell? We eddy about her, move away in silence. We hear slow tollings of a bell. 
Section three Palimpsest A Deceitful Portrait Well, as you say, we live for small horizons. We move in crowds, we flow and talk together, seeing so many eyes and hands and faces, so many mouths, and all with secret meanings, yet know so little of them, only seeing the small bright circle of our consciousness beyond which lies the dark. Some few we know, or think we know. Once on a sunbright morning I walked in a certain hallway, trying to find a certain door. I found one, tried it, opened, and there in a spacious chamber, brightly lighted, a hundred men played music, loudly, swiftly, while one tall woman sent her voice above them in powerful sweetness. Closing then the door, I heard it die behind me, fade to whisper, and walked in a quiet hallway as before. Just such a glimpse as through that open door is all we know of those we call our friends. We hear a sudden music, see a playing of ordered thoughts, and all again is silence. The music we suppose, as in ourselves, goes on forever there behind shut doors, as it continues after our departure. So, we divine, it played before we came. What do you know of me, or I of you? Little enough. We set these doors ajar only for chosen movements of the music. This passage, so I think, yet this is guesswork, will please him. It is in a strain he fancies. More brilliant, though, than his, and while he likes it, he will be piqued. He looks at me bewildered and thinks, to judge from self, this too is guesswork, the music strangely subtle, deep in meaning. Perplexed with implications, he suspects me of hidden riches, unexpected wisdom or else I let him hear a lyric passage, simple and clear, and all the while he listens, I make pretense to think my doors are closed. This too bewilders him, he eyes me sidelong, wondering, is he such a fool as this, or only mocking? There I let it end. Sometimes, of course, and when we least suspect it, when we pursue our thoughts with too much passion, talking with too great zeal, our doors fly open without intention and the hungry watcher stares at the feast, carries away our secrets and laughs. But this for many counts is seldom, and for the most part we vouchsafe our friends, our lovers too, only such few clear notes as we shall deem them likely to admire. Praise me for this, we say, or laugh at this, or marvel at my candor, all the while withholding what's most precious to ourselves. Some sinister depth of lust or fear or hatred the sombre note that gives the chord its power, or a white loveliness, if such we know, too much like fire to speak of without shame. Well, this being so, and we who know it being so curious about those well-locked houses, the minds of those we know, to enter softly, and steal from floor to floor up shadowy stairways, from room to quiet room, from wall to wall, breathing deliberately the very air, pressing our hands and nerves against warm darkness to learn what ghosts are there. Suppose for once I set my doors wide open and bid you in. Suppose I try to tell you the secrets of this house and how I live here. Suppose I tell you who I am, in fact, deceiving you, as far as I may know it, only so much as I deceive myself. If you are clever, you already see me as one who moves forever in a cloud of warm, bright vanity a luminous cloud which falls on all things with a quivering magic, changing such outlines as a light may change, brightening what lies dark to me, concealing those things that will not change. I walk sustained in a world of things that flatter me, a sky just as I would have had it, trees and grass, just as I would have shaped and colored them, pigeons and clouds and sun and whirling shadows, and stars that brightening climb through mist at nightfall, in some deep way I am aware these praise me. Where they are beautiful or hint of beauty, they point somehow to me. This water says, shimmering at the sky or undulating, in broken gleaming parodies of clouds, rippled in blue or sending from cool depths to meet the falling leaf, the leaf's clear image. This water says there is some secret in you, akin to my clear beauty, silently responsive to all that circles you. This bare tree says, austere and stark and leafless, split with frost, resonant in the wind with rigid branches flung out against the sky. This tall tree says, there is some cold austerity in you, 
a frozen strength with long roots gnarled on rocks fertile and deep you bide your time are patient serene in silence bare to outward seeming concealing what reserves of power and beauty what teeming aprils chorus of leaves on leaves these houses say such walls in walls as ours such streets of walls solid and smooth of surface such hills and cities of walls walls upon walls motionless in the sun or dark with rain walls pierced with windows where the light may enter walls windowless where darkness is desired towers and labyrinths and domes and chambers amazing deep recesses dark on dark all these are like the walls which shape your spirit you move are warm within them laugh within them proud of their depth and strength or sally from them when you are bold to blow great horns at the world this deep cool room with shadowed walls and ceiling tranquil and cloistral fragrant of my mind this cool room says just such a room have you it waits you always at the tops of stairways withdrawn remote familiar to your uses where you may cease pretense and be yourself and this embroidery hanging on this wall hung there forever these so soundless glidings of dragons golden scaled sheer birds of azure coilings of leaves in pale vermilion griffins drawing their rainbow wings through involutions of mauve chrysanthemums and lotus flowers this goblin wood where someone cries enchantment this says just such an involuted beauty of thought and coiling thought dream linked with dream image to image gliding wreathing fires soundlessly cries enchantment in your mind you need but sit and close your eyes a moment to see these deep designs unfold themselves and so all things discern me name me praise me i walk in a world of silent voices praising and in this world you see me like a wraith blown softly here and there on silent winds praise me i say and look not in a glass but in your eyes to see my image there or in your mind you smile i am contented you look at me with interest unfeigned and listen i am pleased or else alone i watch thin bubbles veering brightly upward from unknown depths my silver thoughts ascending saying now this now that hinting of all things dreams and desires velleities regrets faint ghosts of memory strange recognitions but all with one deep meaning this is i this is the glistening secret holy i this silver winged wonder insubstantial the singing ghost and hearing i am warmed you see me moving then as one who moves forever at the centre of his circle a circle filled with light and into it come bulging shapes from darkness loom gigantic or huddle in dark again a clock ticks clearly a gas jet steadily whirs light streams across me two church bells with alternate beats strike nine and through these things my pencil pushes softly to weave grey webs of lines on this clear page snow falls and melts the eaves make liquid music black wheel tracks line the snow-touched street i turn and look one instant at the half-dark gardens where skeleton elm trees reach with frozen gesture above unsteady lamps with black boughs flung against a luminous snow-filled grey-gold sky beauty i cry my feet move on and take me between dark walls with orange squares for windows beauty beheld like someone half forgotten remembered with slow pang as one neglected well i am frustrate life has beaten me the thing i strongly seized has turned to darkness and darkness rides my heart these skeleton elm trees leaning against that grey gold snow-filled sky beauty they say and at the edge of darkness extend vain arms in a frozen gesture of protest a clock ticks softly a gas jet steadily whirs the pencil meets its shadow upon clear paper voices are raised a door is slammed the lovers murmuring in an adjacent room grow silent the eaves make liquid music hours have passed and nothing changes and everything is changed exultation is dead beauty is harlot and walks the streets the thing i strongly seized has turned to darkness and darkness rides my heart if you could solve this darkness you would have me this causeless melancholy that comes with rain 
or on such days as this when large wet snowflakes drop heavily with rain whence rises this well so and so this morning when i saw him seemed much preoccupied and would not smile and you i saw too much and you too little and the word i chose for you the golden word the word that should have struck so deep in purpose and set so many doors of wish wide open you let it fall and would not stoop for it and smiled at me and would not let me guess whether you saw it fall these things together with other things still slighter wove to music and this in time drew up dark memories and there i stand this music breaks and bleeds me turning all frustrate dreams to chords and discords faces and griefs and words and sunlit evenings and chains self-forged that will not break nor lengthen and cries that none can answer few will hear have these things meaning or would you see more clearly if i should say my second wife grows tedious or like gay tulip keeps no perfume secret or one day dies eventless as another leaving the seeker still unsatisfied and more convinced life yields no satisfaction or seek too hard the sight at length grows callous and beauty shines in vain these things you asked for these you shall have so talking with my first wife at the dark end of evening when she leaned and smiled at me with blue eyes weaving webs of finest fire revolving me in scarlet calling to mind remote and small successions of countless other evenings ending so i smiled and met her kiss and wished her dead dead of a sudden sickness or by my hands savagely killed i saw her in her coffin i saw her coffin borne downstairs with trouble i saw myself alone there palely watching wearing a mask of grief so deeply acted that grief itself possessed me time would pass and i should meet this girl my second wife and drop the mask of grief for one of passion forward we moved to meet half hesitating we drown in each other's eyes we laugh we talk looking now here now there faintly pretending we do not hear the powerful pulsing prelude roaring beneath our words the time approaches we lean unbalanced the mute last glance between us profoundly searching opening asking yielding is steadily met our two lives draw together what are you thinking of my first wife's voice scattered these ghosts oh nothing nothing much just wondering where we'd be two years from now and what we might be doing and then remorse turned sharply in my mind to sudden pity and pity to echoed love and one more evening drew to the usual end of sleep and silence and as it is with this so too with all things the pages of our lives are blurred palimpsest new lines are wreathed on old lines half erased and those on older still and so forever the old shines through the new and colors it what's new what's old all things have double meanings all things return i write a line with passion or touch a woman's hand or plumb a doctrine only to find the same thing done before only to know the same thing comes tomorrow this curious riddled dream i dreamed last night six years ago i dreamed it just as now the same man stooped to me we rose from darkness and broke the accustomed order of our days and struck for the morning world and warmth and freedom what does it mean why is this hint repeated what darkness does it spring from seek to end you see me then pass up and down these stairways now through a beam of light and now through shadow pursuing silent ends no rest there is no more for me than you i move here always from quiet room to room from wall to wall searching and plodding weaving a web of days this is my house and now perhaps you know me yet i confess for all my best intentions once more i have deceived you i withhold the one thing precious the one dark thing that guides me and i have spread two snares for you of lies section four counterpoint two rooms he in the room above grown old and tired she in the room below his floor her ceiling pursue their separate dreams he turns his light and throws himself on the bed face down in laughter she by the window smiles at a starlight night his watch the same he has heard these cycles of ages wearily chimes at seconds beneath his pillow 
The clock upon her mantelpiece strikes nine, the night wears on, She hears dull steps above her, the world whirs on, new stars come up to shine. His youth, far off, he sees it brightly walking in a golden cloud, Wings flashing about it, darkness walls it around with dripping enormous walls. Old age, far off, her death, what do they matter? Down the smooth purple night a streaked star falls. She hears slow steps in the street, they chime like music. They climb to her heart, they break in flower and beauty. Along her veins they glisten and ring and burn. He hears his own slow steps tread down to silence. Far off they pass, he knows they will never return. Far off on a smooth dark road he hears them faintly. The road, like a sombre river quietly flowing, Moves among murmurous walls, a deeper breath swells them to sound. He hears his steps more clearly, and death seems nearer to him, or he to death. What's death? She smiles. The cool stone hurts her elbows. The last of the raindrops gather and fall from elm boughs. She sees them glisten and break. The arc lamp sings. The new leaves dip in the warm wet air and fragrance. A sparrow whirs to the eaves and shakes his wings. What's death? What's death? The spring returns like music. The trees are like dark lovers who dream in starlight. The soft gray clouds go over the stars like dreams. The cool stone wounds her arms to pain, to pleasure. Under the lamp a circle of wet street gleams. Under the lamp a circle of wet street gleams. And death seems far away, a thing of roses. A golden portal where golden music closes. Death seems far away. And spring returns the countless singing of lovers and spring returns to stay he in the room above grown old and tired flings himself on the bed face down in laughter and clenches his hands and remembers and desires to die and she by the window smiles at a night of starlight the soft gray clouds go slowly across the sky section five the bitter love song no i shall not say why it is that i love you why do you ask me save for vanity? Surely you would not have me like a mirror say yes, your hair curls darkly back from the temples, your mouth has a humorous, tremulous, half-shy sweetness, your eyes are April gray with jonquils in them? No, if I tell at all, I shall tell in silence. I'll say, my childhood broke through chords of music, or were they chords of sun wherein fell shadows or silences? I rose through seas of sunlight or sometimes found a darkness stooped above me with wings of death and a face of cold clear beauty i lay in the warm sweet grass on a blue may morning my chin in a dandelion my hands in clover and drowsed there like a bee blue days behind me stretched like a chain of deep blue pools of magic enchanted silent timeless days before me murmured of blue sea mornings noons of gold green evenings streaked with lilac bee-starred nights confused soft clouds of music fled above me sharp shafts of music dazzled my eyes and pierced me i ran and turned and spun and danced in the sunlight shrank sometimes from the freezing silence of beauty or crept once more to the warm white cave of sleep no i shall not say this is why i praise you because you say such wise things or such foolish you would not have me say what you know better let me instead be silent, only saying my childhood lives in me, or half lives, rather, and if I close my eyes, cool chords of music flow up to me, long chords of wind and sunlight, shadows of intricate vines on sunlit walls, deep bells beating with eons of blue between them, grass blades leagues apart with worlds between them, walls rushing up to heaven with stars upon them. I lay in my bed and through the tall night window saw the green lightning plunging among the clouds and heard the harsh rainstorm at the panes and roof how should i know how should i now remember what half-dreamed great wings curved and sang above me what wings like swords what eyes with the dread night in them this i shall say i lay by the hot white sand dunes small yellow flowers sapless and squat and spiny stared at the sky and silently there above us day after day beyond our dreams and knowledge presences swept and over us streamed their shadows swift and blue or dark what did they mean what sinister threat of power what hint of beauty 
prelude to what gigantic music or subtle only i know these things leaned over me brooded upon me paused went flowing softly glided and passed i loved i desired i hated i struggled i yielded and loved was warmed to blossom you when your eyes have evening sunlight in them set these dunes before me these salt bright flowers these presences i drowse they stream above me i struggle i yield in love i am warm to dream you are the window if i could tell i'd tell you through which i see a clear far world of sunlight you are the silence if you could hear you'd hear me in which i remember a thin still whisper of singing it is not you i laugh for you i touch my hands that touch you suddenly touch white cobwebs coldly silvered heavily silvered with dewdrops and clover heavy with rain and cold green grass section six cinema as evening falls the walls grow luminous and warm the walls tremble and glow with the lives within them moving moving like music secret and rich and warm how shall we live to-night where shall we turn to what new light or darkness yearn a thousand winding stairs lead down before us and one by one in myriads we descend by lamp-lit flowered walls long balustrades through half-lit halls which reach no end Take my arm, then, you or you or you, and let us walk abroad on the solid air, and look how the organist's head in silhouette leans to the lamp-lit music's orange square. The dim-globed lamps illumine rows of faces, rows of hands and arms and hungry eyes. They have hurried down from a myriad secret places, from windy chambers next to the skies the music comes upon us. It shakes the darkness, it shakes the darkness in our minds, and brilliant figures suddenly fill the darkness. Down the white shaft of light they run through darkness, and in our hearts a dazzling dream unwinds. Take my hand, then, walk with me by the slow soundless crashings of a sea, down miles on miles of glistening mirror-like sand. Take my hand, and walk with me once more by crumbling walls, up mouldering stairs where grey-stemmed ivy clings to hear forgotten bells as evening falls rippling above us invisibly their slowly widening rings did you once love me did you bear a name did you once stand before me without shame take my hand your face is one i know i loved you long ago you are like music long forgotten suddenly come to mind you are like spring returned through snow once i know i walked with you in starlight and many nights i slept and dreamed of you come let us climb once more these stairs of starlight this midnight stream of cloud-flung blue music murmurs beneath us like a sea and faints to a ghostly whisper come with me are you still doubtful of me hesitant still fearful perhaps that i may yet remember what you would gladly if you could forget you were unfaithful once you met your lover still in your heart you bear that red-eyed ember and i was silent you remember my silence yet you knew as well as i i could not kill him nor touch him with hot hands nor yet with hate no and it was not you i saw with anger instead i rose and beat as steel-walled fate cried till i lay exhausted sick unfriended that life so seeming sure and love so certain should loose such tricks be so abruptly ended ring down so suddenly an unlooked-for curtain how could i find it in my heart to hurt you you whom this love could hurt much more than i no you were pitiful and i gave you pity and only hated you when i saw you cry we were two dupes if i could give forgiveness had i the right i should forgive you now we were two dupes come let us walk in starlight and feed our griefs we do not break but bow take my hand then come with me by the white shadowy crashings of a sea Look how the long volutes of foam unfold to spread their mottled shimmer along the sand. Take my hand. Do not remember how these depths are cold, nor how when you are dead green leagues of sea will glimmer above your head. You lean your face upon your hands and cry. The blown sand whispers about your feet. Terrible seems it now to die. Terrible now with life so incomplete to turn away from the balconies and the music, the sunlit afternoons, to hear behind you there a far-off laughter lost in a stirring of sand among dry dunes die not sadly you whom life has beaten lift your face up laughing die like a queen 
Take cold flowers of foam in your warm white fingers, Death's but a change of sky from blue to green. As evening falls, the walls grow luminous and warm, The walls tremble and glow, the music breathes upon us, The rayed white shaft plays over our heads like magic, And to and fro we move and lean and change, You in a world grown strange, Laugh at a darkness, clench your hands despairing, Smash your glass on a floor no longer caring, Sink suddenly down and cry. You hear the applause that greets your latest rival, You are forgotten, your rival, who knows, is I. I laugh in the warm bright light of answering laughter, I am inspired and young, and though I see you sitting alone there, Dark, with shut eyes crying, I bask in the light and in your hate of me. Failure? Well, the time comes soon or later. The night must come, and I'll be one who clings desperately to hold the applause one instant, to keep some youngster waiting in the wings. The music changes tone, a room is darkened, someone is moving, the crack of white light widens, and all is dark again till suddenly falls a wandering disk of light on floor and walls. Winks out, returns again, climbs and descends, gleams on a clock, a glass, shrinks back to darkness, and then at last in the chaos of that place, Dazzles like frozen fire on your clear face. Well, I have found you. We have met at last. Now you shall not escape me. In your eyes I see the horrible huddlings of your past. All you remember blackens, utters cries, reaches far hands and faint. I hold the light close to your cheek. Watch the pain pupils shrink. Watch the vile ghosts of all you vilely think. Now all the hatreds of my life have met to hold high carnival we do not speak my fingers find the well-loved throat they seek and press and fling you down and then forget who plays for me what sudden drums keep time to the ecstatic rhythm of my crime what flute shrills out as moonlight strikes the floor what violin so faintly cries seeing how strangely in the moon he lies the room grows dark once more a crack of white light narrows around the door and all is silent except a slow complaining of flutes and violins like music waning. Take my hand, then, walk with me by the slow soundless crashings of a sea. Look how white these shells are on the sand. Take my hand, and watch the waves run inward from the sky, line upon foaming line to plunge and die. The music that bound our lives is lost behind us. Paltry, it seems, here in this wind-swung place, motionless under the sky's vast vault of azure we stand in a terror of beauty face to face the dry grass creaks in the wind the blown sand whispers the soft sand seethes on the dunes the clear grains glisten once they were rock a chaos of golden boulders now they are blown by the wind we stand and listen to the sliding of grain upon timeless grain and feel our lives go past like a whisper of pain have I not seen you? Have we not met before here on this sun and sea wrecked shore? You shade your sea gray eyes with a sunlit hand and peer at me, far sea gulls in your eyes flash in the sun, go down. I hear slow sand and shrink to nothing beneath blue, brilliant skies. The music ends, the screen grows dark. We hurry to go our devious secret ways, forgetting those many lives. We loved, we laughed, we killed. We danced in fire, we drowned in a whirl of sea waves. The flutes are stilled and a thousand dreams are stilled. Whose body have I found beside dark waters? The cold white body garlanded with seaweed, staring with wide eyes at the sky. I bent my head above it and cried in silence. Only the things I dreamed of heard my cry. Once I loved, and she I loved was darkened, again I loved, and love itself was darkened, vainly we follow the circle of shadowy days. The screen at last grows dark, the flutes are silent, the doors of night are closed, we go our ways. Section 7 The sun goes down in a cold, pale flare of light, the trees grow dark, the shadows lean to the east, and lights wink out through the windows one by one. A clamor of frosty sirens mourns at the night. Pale slate-gray clouds whirl up from the sunken sun. And the wandering one, the inquisitive dreamer of dreams, the eternal asker of answers, stands in the street and lifts his palms for the first cold ghost of rain.
The purple lights leap down the hill before him. The gorgeous night has begun again. I will ask them all, I will ask them all their dreams. I will hold my light above them and seek their faces. I will hear them whisper invisible in their veins. The eternal asker of answers becomes as the darkness, or as a wind blown over a myriad forest, or as the numberless voices of long-drawn rains. We hear him and take him among us like a wind of music, like the ghost of a music we have somewhere heard. We crowd through the streets in a dazzle of pallid lamplight. We pour in a sinister mass. We ascend a stair, with laughter and cry, with word upon murmured word. We flow, we descend, we turn, and the eternal dreamer moves on among us like light, like evening air. Good night, good night, good night, we go our ways. The rain runs over the pavement before our feet. The cold rain falls, the rain sings. We walk, we run, we ride, we turn our faces to what the eternal evening brings. Our hands are hot and raw with the stones we have laid. We have built a tower of stone high into the sky. We have built a city of towers. Our hands are light, they are singing with emptiness. Our souls are light, they have shaken a burden of ours. What did we build it for? Was it all a dream? Ghostly above us in lamplight the towers gleam and after a while they will fall to dust and rain, or else we will tear them down with impatient hands, and hew rock out of the earth, and build them again. End of Part 4 Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine End of The House of Dust, A Symphony by Conrad Aiken.